Okay, we're going to go over 7.1, but before we do that, I want to just to go over the unit form exam reference sheet. This is all, these are all the formulas and equations that you're going to be getting. Um, it might be slightly different uh, formulas, like I might change this to an X and a Y, but A and B works as well. Uh, so there's a few things in here that might look slightly different, okay, than the one that you currently have. 7.1, we're covering the polar coordinates. A polar coordinate is a different type of system. You have a fixed point, okay, that's called our pole or the origin. Now, in polar coordinates, we're not using an X and a Y anymore. We're actually using an R and a theta. So these sections here will be referred to as R theta, okay? Our R is our radius, which is going to be determined by these lines. So this is an R of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and so forth, okay? So if R is going to be positive, then the point P is located that many units from the pole in the direction of theta, whatever theta is. If R is negative, it's actually going in the opposite direction. Remember, we've been talking about negative signs is a directional. So anytime you have negative, instead of going forward, we're actually going back. If R is equal to zero, then P is located at that pole. Okay. Theta is going to be a directional angle. All right. So again, here's our pole. Here's our polar axis. And then theta will be whatever distance is given. So we're looking at R and theta. Okay. We're going to plot some of these points here. I always find it easier if we start with our theta. So I'm going to go straight to pi over 4 and then from the pole you're going to go in that direction three units. One, two, three. This is going to be point A. Second one, pi over 6, right here. And notice that our r is negative 4. So that means instead of going towards that direction, we're actually going to be going backwards. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. B will be here. Negative 4 pi over 3 is saying that we're going down 4 pi over 3. Now, 4 pi over 3 is 240 degrees. So we're going in this direction, 240 degrees, which will be up here. Okay. Another way you can do this uh, is just find the standard angle. So I'm going to do negative 4 divided by 3. And I'm going to add 2. I'm changing this negative 4 pi into a standard angle. And then into a fraction. So this is going to be the same thing as 2 thirds pi. So this is equal to 2.5 2 pi over 3. Okay. So I'm going to go to 2 pi over 3 and I'm going to go in that direction 2.5. So we're going to go 1, 2 and a half right here is B. 9 pi over 4, I'm going to change this into a standard angle. And that will give me the same thing as saying 5 pi over 4. Pi over 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right here would be point D. Next, 7 pi over 6. We're going to go ahead and find that location, which is here, and we're going 6 in that direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This will be my point E. F is saying 5 pi over 6, which is right here. And then in, because R is negative, we're not going towards that direction. We're actually going in the opposite direction. And we'll be going back 5. So let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This will be my point F. Now we're done. Problem 2. 
Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be given a point and we're going to find two other polar coordinates when R is positive. So anytime R is going to be positive, what we're essentially going to do is we're just going to find another coterminal angle with the angle we're given. Okay, you're going to do that by either adding or subtracting 2 pi. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. First thing I'm going to do here is just say, well, 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Okay, just use your calculator for these. So I'm going to do 7 divided by 6 plus 2. Second PRB, second under PRB. And you get 19 over 6. So our first answer, will, R will be the same, which is 3, and then we would have 19 pi over 6. Second thing we're going to do is go ahead and subtract. So I'm still using the same angle that was given, and now I'm going to subtract 2 pi. Okay. All I'm going to do in the calculator is go up, change the addition to a subtraction, and then second, PRB will give me a negative 5 pi over 6. So our second answer will be 3 negative 5 pi over 6 and we're done. Number three says to find two other polar coordinates. Now R needs to be negative. So let's go ahead and just plot this point. This is pi over three, and then we're going to, so one, two, okay? This is where that point would be. What is another way we can say this? Okay, so if we want R to be negative, remember R would be negative if we go in the opposite direction. So what we're trying to do is find an angle and then go backwards so R is negative, okay? So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the negative R, so I'll be just saying negative 2, and then I'll be using this equation. Basically all I'm going to be doing is adding pi, okay? So let's go ahead and do this one. Pi over 3. Okay, plus pi. This would be 4 pi over 3. This would be a negative 2, 4 pi over 3. Okay, now I'm going to show you that this is exactly the same thing. As we already plotted that point, I'm going to go ahead and plot it up here. Okay, so I'm going to use pi over 3 and I'm going to go 2. So that would be this point right here. If I'm plotting this point here, I'm going to say 4 pi over 3, which is right here, but the negative says to go back. So instead of going this way, the negative r says to go back. So if I go back to 1, 2, I'm still exactly on that point right there. Okay, this is a plus r this would be a negative r at 4 pi over 3. Now that I have my first point, let's go ahead and find another point. I can say pi over 3 minus pi. That would get me a negative 2 pi over 3. So my second point would be negative 2, negative 2 pi over 3. Let's go ahead and plot the second point. Okay. Now we have negative 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is going to be 120 degrees. So negative 2 pi over 3 will be right here. This is going to be our negative 120 degrees. Okay. That's the first thing we want to do. Or negative 2 pi over 3. Okay, this is my value. This is my line. Then I'm going to say, if I'm going to use this line, this will be a plus r. This will be a minus r. So if I go negative 2, 1, 2, I'm exactly in the same point. So these two points get to the exact same position. Down here, it's just telling you how to convert these from 
uh, from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates, okay? So x is going to be equal to r cosine theta, and y would be equal to r sine theta. This is similar to the unit circle where we said x is cosine and y is sine, except r on the unit circle, r is equal to 1. So if r is not equal to 1, all we're doing is multiplying it by that r. Okay? It's the same thing as saying cosine theta is equal to x over r. Okay? And we're just rearranging. r would be the same thing as our hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay. Same thing for sine. Down here, all we're doing is converting our rectangular coordinates, x and y, to polar coordinates. Okay, so this is changing polar to rectangular. This is changing rectangular to polar. And the same things exist. Okay, this is using the Pythagorean's identity. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay, on the unit circle, r would be equal to 1. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, as long as x is not equal to 0 because then we have an undefined situation. Okay, number four says we're going to change the polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates, all right? So all we're going to do here is use our formulas that I actually give you. So I'm going to go ahead and sneak this up here. Our x is going to equal to r cosine theta. So our x coordinates will be 3 cosine of 5 pi over 3. You can evaluate this part, okay, using your unit circle. So what is cosine of 5 pi over 3? Cosine of 5 pi over 3 is 1 half, so I'm going to substitute that in. So here I can say 3 times 1 half. So our x value will be 3 halves. Our y value is going to be y is equal to r sine theta, or in other words, 3 sine 5 pi over 3, which is 3 times negative square root of 3 over 2. Negative square root of 3 over 2. So when we're changing our coordinates over, to our rectangular coordinates, we're going to say x is first, which is 3 halves, and then our y, which is negative 3 square root of 3 over 2, and that will be our answer. Let's go ahead and plot that point. If I were to plot it, I would say 5 pi over 3, which is right here, okay, and then 3. 1, 2, 3, that would be right there. And as you can see, we do expect a positive x and a negative y. All right. Number 5, let's go ahead and plot the point first. I'm going to start with a negative 4 pi over 3 means instead of going this direction, we're actually going down. So we're going to go here. And then we're going to be going positive 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Our point will be right here. So we expect a positive x and a negative y. Let's use the same formulas as before. x is equal to r cosine theta, which is 5 cosine negative pi over 4. Okay. So 5, and then using our unit circle, cosine would be square root of 2 over 2. Same thing for the next one, y is equal to r sine theta, 5 sine negative pi over 4, which is equal to 5 times negative square root of 2 over 2. So our x, y coordinates would be 5 square root of 2 over 2, negative 5 square root of 2 over 2, and that will be your answer. Number six says convert the ordered pair in rectangular coordinates, here's my x, here's my y, into polar coordinates. Here are my restrictions. R needs to be positive 
and theta should be between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and use my formulas. We need these two equations. Okay. Remember this is our x and this is our y. So I can find r really easily. So r squared will be negative 3 square root of 2 squared plus 3 square root of 2 squared. The square applies to everything inside. So negative times negative will be positive. 3 times 3 is 9. And the square root of 2 squared is just 2. Plus 9 times 2. Okay. R squared is equal to 18 plus 18, which is equal to 36. Okay. So here, R can equal a plus or a minus 6. Our restrictions state that R has to be positive, so we're going to say R is equal to a plus 6. Okay. Second piece of information is asking for theta. So I'm going to use this equation. I'm going to say tangent of theta is equal to y, which is 3, square root of 2, over x, which is negative 3, square root of 2. Okay. This will give me tangent of theta is equal to negative 1. Where is tangent negative 1? Well, if you go back to your unit circle, you should say tangent can be negative 1 in quadrants 2 or in quadrants 4. How do I know which is the correct quadrant we need to be in? Well, go back to your x and y points. If x is negative and y is positive, you should be in quadrant 2. So when you're choosing which, which angle to use, go back to your points. We're going to use 3 pi over 4. So theta is going to be equal to 3 pi over 4. Okay. So my answer, 6, that's my r, 3 pi over 4. That's my theta. Number seven, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Four plus 16. So r will equal to plus or minus the square root of 20. We don't want to leave it with the square root of 20. We want to simplify as much as possible. So the square root of 20 is the same thing as saying 4 times 5. If I square root the 20, I can square root the 4, and I can square root the 5. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of 5. Okay. So r is going to be equal to, remember our restrictions, has to be positive, so I can say 2 square root of 5. Okay. Simplify it. For theta, we're going to use tangent theta is equal to y, which is negative 4, over x which is 2. So tangent theta is equal to negative 2. This is not on the unit circle, so we can use the calculator for approximations. I'm going to go ahead and use the calculator. Make sure you're in radian mode because theta has to be in radians. Second tangent negative 2 and we're going to get approximately Theta is approximately negative 1.1. Okay. Now, which quadrant should we be in? Well, positive 2, negative 4, positive 2, negative 4 means we should be in quadrant 4. And this is in quadrant 4. So our final answer will be 2 square root of 5. But we want the angle to be a standard angle, so I'm going to add 2 pi to this. Okay. So I'm going to take this angle and I'm going to add 2 pi. This will be 5.2. Okay. And this is your final answer. The next part says we're going to be converting equations in polar 
and rectangular coordinates. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying, and we've been kind of doing this already, we're going to be applying one of these four formulas um, in order to convert from rectangular form to polar form. Okay, so let's start with number eight. Number eight, we're going to go ahead and use this formula here. X is going to be equal to R cosine theta. Now, I can say, if I have this part missing, I'm saying x is equal to r cosine theta. That's from this formula here. Now I know that x is equal to 12, I can say r cosine theta is equal to 12. Can we solve for r? Okay, yes. Let's go ahead and divide by cosine theta. So r is going to be equal to 12 over cosine theta. Theta. Okay. What is 1 over cosine? That's the same thing as saying 12 over secant theta. Number 9, y. We're going to set y is equal to r sine theta. Okay. Now if I get rid of this part, I can divide both sides by sine. So r is equal to negative 6 over sine theta, which is the same thing as saying negative 6 cosecant theta. So number 10 is a little bit different because now you're given an x and now you're given a y. So all we're going to do is set each of those individually. Well, x is still going to be the same thing as your r cosine theta. So all I'm doing here is substituting x for what x is equal to x is equal to r cosine theta. y is going to be equal to r sine theta. And the whole thing is that equal to 4. Okay. So now what I can say, say is when I'm looking at these two, I can say, huh, an r is in common on both. I can factor that out. So I can have r 2 cosine theta minus 5 sine theta, all equal to 4. Now we can divide both sides by this entire um, parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and cancel these out, and I can see that r is equal to 4 over 2 cosine theta minus 5, five sine theta. That's our answer. Number 11. This one's a really convenient one because I can see here x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So all I'm doing here is saying all of this is r squared is equal to 121. Okay. Solve for r. r is going to be equal to plus or minus 11. r will equal to 11. Number 12, we have an x and we have a y. It's different than the others because y is squared while x is not. So all you're going to continue to do is substitute what x is equal to and what y is equal to. Remember, x is equal to r cosine theta, 4, and y is equal to r sine theta. But that is squared. So this square goes on the outside of the parentheses, but it applies to both of these. So I'm going to rewrite and say r cosine theta is equal to 4 r squared sine squared theta. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and divide by r. Okay. We're going to divide by r. I do this because I can see that these two will cancel and one of these will cancel leaving me with only one r. But if we're solving for r like we have been in the other equations, what we need to do is go ahead and get rid of the 4 sine squared. So I'm going to divide by 4, and I'm going to divide by sine squared theta. This will cancel with this. This will cancel with that. And one of these will cancel with one of those. So now I have r 
is equal to cosine theta over 4 sine squared theta. Okay, we're not done yet. Remember, we can break this up and simplify. So I'm going to use cosine theta over 4 sine theta times sine theta. Now we're going to go ahead and break it up more. I can say 1 4 over cosine over sine is cotangent and 1 over sine cosecant. For number 13, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. I'm going to go ahead and foil all of this out. If I were to go ahead and say x minus 5 times x minus 5, you'll get x squared minus 10x plus 25 plus y squared is equal to 25. Okay. Now I can go ahead and subtract 25 from both sides and set this equal to 0. Okay. So this cancels and this cancel. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and strategically move. I'm going to say x squared plus y squared minus 10x, which is this part here, is equal to 0. Okay. Now look at this. x squared plus y squared, what is that equal to? That's equal to r squared minus 10. What is x equal to? r cosine theta is equal to 0. Okay. Now what I can do is look at these two terms and say, oh, I can factor out an r. So I can have r, r minus 10 cosine theta is equal to 0. Okay. Use the 0 property rule where r can equal to 0 or r minus 10 cosine theta can equal to 0. Okay. Solve for r this way. r is equal to 10 cosine theta. Whenever r is equal to 0, that's your, your polar point. So that's always going to be included in this particular equation. So we can say that r is equal to 10 cosine theta is our solution. Number 14, now we're going to go backwards and we're going to take these polar equations and make them into rectangular form. Okay, so let's do the first one. Here we have r is equal to 15. Well, there's not much we can do on this case, so what we're going to do is we're just going to square both sides. So I'm going to get r squared is equal to 225. Now I can say what is r squared equal to? Well, x squared plus y squared is equal to 225. Okay, you're done. This is the, um, this is the final equation. And if you remember, this is going to represent a circle. Number 15, whenever you have a theta on this side, what you're going to do is apply a tangent to both sides. So if I do a tangent theta is equal to a tangent 2 pi over 3, we can evaluate what tangent of 2 pi over 3 is. Let's use the unit circle. Tangent of 2 pi over 3 is going to be equal to negative square root of 3 over 1. What is tangent of theta equal to? y over x. So here what I can say is y over x is equal to negative square root of 3. Multiply both sides by x. These will cancel, and I get y is equal to the negative square root of 3 times x. This is going to be a linear equation. Number 16, okay, this one is a little bit different. What we need to do first is go ahead and change our secant to 1 over cosine. So r is equal to negative 8 over cosine theta. When I times cosine by both sides, you will see those two cancel. And what is r cosine of theta? r cosine of theta is equal to x. So this side I can say x is equal to negative 8. Okay. This is going to be a vertical line. 
Number 17, this is probably one of the harder ones because it's not very obvious how we can get the R and the sine theta to be um, on the same side. Um, there's not really anything we can do here, but multiply both sides by R. So we're going to have to multiply everything by R. So here I'm going to get R squared is equal to 10 R sine theta. R squared is the same thing as x squared plus y squared, 10, and R sine theta is the same thing as y. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and set it equal to 0. So I'm going to get x squared plus y squared minus 10y equal to 0. We need to complete the squares. We're going to be doing a lot of completing the squares um, coming up in the next unit, but this is a great practice time for it. All right, let's go ahead and do that. x squared plus y squared minus 10y plus something is equal to plus something. Okay. Let's refresh. We're going to take the negative 10, divide that by 2. That gets me a negative 5. Then I'm going to square it. Okay. When I square it, I get 25. This 25 will go into both of these blanks. I can go ahead and factor this out, which will be y minus 5 squared. All I do in this case is use this as a guide and whatever variable I have here, I will put in the front. So if I did y minus 5 and I square the whole thing, I will get this if I FOIL it out. Okay, is equal to 25. Okay, this is our answer and this is also going to be a circle. Alright, that concludes 7.1. Let me know if you have any questions.